Today we're going to teach you to properly play the light or open D throw. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about liking the video, subscribing below, and sharing with any other pipers you think might get something out of this. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. In the description below, there's a download link to the PDF exercise I have right here, so go ahead, print that out, download it, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. Ah, the D throw, one of the most common embellishments in early bagpipe music. So it's one that we definitely need to make sure we're playing properly, correctly, strongly, all of those things. And it's an embellishment that comes in more than one variety. But for my method and the way I go about teaching people, I always start all of my students with the light or open D throw. I'm going to just call it the light D throw from here on out because that's what I refer to it as. But other people in other parts of the world call it an open D throw. That's just fine. But it's a D throw that is made of, well, no grace notes. It's written with three grace notes, but there are no actual grace notes in it. There are three sounding tones. And for those that have been following this series, you know that a sounding tone is a real note that is written like a grace note. So in a previous video on doublings, which there'll be a link to up here, I go over this a little bit more, where in a doubling you have a G grace note, a, a quick lifting G grace note to a note that is written as a grace note, and then another grace note separating the two notes into a doubling. So say in a C doubling, it might be a G grace note to emphasize the first one, and then a D grace note to take you to the final C, doubling that C, hence the name, but the C between the G grace note and the D grace note is a sounding tone. It's the note you're actually going to hear, but all three are written the same way in our music. For the light D throw, however, it actually is played the way it's written ultimately, which you can see in the third part of the exercise down here. It's a low G, a D, a C, and a D. So this isn't going to be an overly long video. This is a relatively simple embellishment, and I think it's one that most everyone can get under control pretty quickly. We're going to take just a second and enjoy a little bit of the Lagavulin 9-year Game of Thrones edition, Lannister Lagavulin. So... Uh, I've been studying this bottle a little bit. This was a gift from uh, retired Reverend Bill Parr of the Norkirk Presbyterian Church, where my pipe band, well, practices when there's not the thing going around that won't be spoken on YouTube about. But uh, Reverend, thank you so much for this lovely spirit. So it's got that distinctive peat nose that you're expecting from a Lagavulin. But it's definitely a little lighter. I think it's a little sweeter. And it's not quite as heavily peated, I would say. The arrival is, I would say, just a touch more heated. You can tell that, well, it's a nine-year versus the standard bottling of a Lagavulin, which is 16, so that's quite a difference. But it's, in again, no way unpleasant. It's definitely sweeter on the palate as well. Uh, it's not cloying in any way, but compared to a standard Lagavulin, I think the sweetness, the caramely kind of notes are coming out more. And the peat's definitely been tempered just a little bit. So this might be a good uh, peated whiskey, for someone interested in maybe dipping their toe in the peated whiskey environment, um, I think it's very accessible. Um, it's still quite heavily peated, uh, but not quite like the normal Lagavulin. So anyways, lovely spirit. And again, Reverend Parr, thank you so much. There are a few things about D throws, whether they're light or heavy, that make them fairly interesting. One, while you technically can do a D throw from a D to a D, I have never seen that happen in the wild, and I've been specifically told it doesn't occur. There's nothing technically illegal about it, but it's not done. You would use a D strike, and um, when that video is ready, there'll be a link to D strikes right there. That's the embellishment you would use if you're on a D and wanted to go to another D with some emphasis. So as you look through this exercise, you can see we start on low A, B, C, we skip D, and then we go to E, F, G, high A, but there are D throws from low G, and they're written a little bit differently. I actually want to take just a second to look at the very bottom bar of the entire page. And down there you can see the low G, and then just a D grace note, C grace note to another quarter note D. That's how they're going to be written properly when coming from a low G, because the low G actually comes before the beat. Bum, bo, ba, do, dum, no, G, D, C, D. 
So because the low G is coming before the beat and you're already on a low G, that low G is gonna be swallowed by the G right there and it'd be redundant to write it in again. So sometimes it's written in that way, but most of the time in most modern pipe music, it's written properly without that extra low G that would happen if you were starting on a low G. But from any other note, you're gonna go down to the low G, up to the D, down to a C, and then back to D. And one of the things that's pretty cool is because you go down to the low G, kind of once you learn the first one, you've kind of learned all of them because they're all played the same way. It almost like self-resets itself as you're playing through the exercise. Enough talking, let's go ahead and do what we see right here. I have the metronome set at 85. This is at 85. We're gonna do the first two lines starting on low A. Even I squeak sometimes. Let's go back in. So again, that one at the very end where we go down to low G is going to feel like it has less going on because it does. For exercise two, I'm actually gonna bring the metronome down just a little bit because we're kind of doubling the speed in which we're making the embellishment occur, trying to build up the speed as we go. We could definitely play it at 85, but I think the beginner would have more success maybe starting at, say, 72 once they can do the first part well at, say, 80 or 85. But it's the same notes in the same sequence. Let's give it a go. See what happens. Again, play that as many times as you need to get it down clean and accurate before we go on and try to speed them up one final time to make them kind of full speed where you could really put them into a melody. So now we're moving on to the third part of the exercise where now the embellishments are written out at full speed and we're gonna play them at full speed. Now, as we play through them, I'm going to do my best to keep all three of the grace notes in this the same length. They're all sounding tones when we're playing a light D throw. And again, what do I mean by all three notes are sounding tones? I want all three of them to have a nice oparoda. And not, say, making the D a D grace note to C. That would sound like this. That's not what we want. That doesn't sound like a light D throw. And we also don't want the C to be a striking or tapping motion like this. That wouldn't be right either. We want all three to have just a nice, flowing rhythm. Nice and light. This time, I think the word light really fits it well. It just kind of flows. We have so many embellishments that are kind of crisp and really kind of almost like an attack. This one kind of gives a nice, just kind of rippling feel into the note, and I love it. I'll use light D throws in quite a few of my tunes, especially slower ones. All right, let's take just a second to talk about the heavy D throw, not how to really play it, but just so that you're aware. Now, I do have a video to heavy D throws up here if you want to try to get them under control, but it is a far more advanced technique. And I would say a goodly percentage of my students' light D throws kind of morph into heavy D throws um, on their own. So I'm not sure it's something you really need to worry about at this point if you're really a beginner and using this video as a learning tool. But Briefly, the light D throw incorporates a crossing noise between the D and the C, and it sounds like. It's a bit more rippling. It's got a great sound to it. I love heavy D throws, but I love light throws as well. It's nice to have both. There is an older school mentality that you should master one or the other. I don't see any reason you can't master both and then have both of them in your arsenal to pull out when you need to and really be able to express that tune the way you want to. Let's do the exercise. The light D throw. You're going to be playing this embellishment a lot. Whether you continue on this basic series or you go on to other pipe tunes of your own, know that you're gonna play lots of D throws. So maybe incorporate this into your warm up for a little while so that, well, you're prepared and that you got it rippling well under your fingers. 
Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. For those that want to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. And you'll see names scrolling down the screen. These are some fine folks that have contributed on a monthly basis to the channel, and I really appreciate it. It helps more than you know. So add your name to this list. Go head over to my Patreon and sign up. I've also recently launched a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise. We have the coffee mug right here, but there's also t-shirts and several designs and hats and beanies and other stuff. Go check it out. Again, it helps support the channel. And I don't know, I like having bagpipe merchandise. It's just fun. If you want a more personalized instruction, I also give Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the address you see there and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. All right, everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and until next time, cheers.